This is Dr. Michelle Cotty, and we are going to talk about trauma and stressor related disorders. The objectives of this presentation are to identify types of trauma or stressor related disorders, to assess for risk factors of acute stress disorder, PTSD and adjustment disorder, and to compare expected findings of acute distress disorder and PTSD. Let's look at the types of disorders under trauma and stress related disorders. Acute stress disorder is exposure to traumatic events, which causes anxiety, detachment, and other manifestations about the event for at least three days, but not more than a month following the event. So that's acute stress disorder, or ASD. PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, is when an exposure to a traumatic event causes anxiety, detachment, and other manifestations about the event. And these feelings last for more than a month, but can last for years. Adjustment disorder is when a stressor triggers a reaction, causing changes in mood and or dysfunction in performing usual activities. The stressor and effects are less severe than with acute stress disorder or PTSD. Dissociative disorders. So there are several types of dissociative disorders. Depersonalization or derealization disorder. This is a temporary change in awareness. So the individual, when they experience stress, depersonalize or derealize. And what does this mean? Depersonalization is the feeling that a person is observing one's own personality or body from a distance, like you're disconnected from your body. That's depersonalization. And derealization is the feeling that outside events are, are unreal or part of a dream or that objects appear larger or smaller than they should. Dissociative amnesia, the inability to recall personal information related to traumatic or stressful events. The amnesia can be of events of a certain period of time or just certain details. Dissociative fugue. This is a type of dissociative amnesia in which the client travels to a new area and can't remember their own identity and at least some of their own past. It can last for weeks to months and usually follows a traumatic event. And dissociative identity disorder. This is when a client displays more than one distinct personality with a stressful event precipitating the change from one personality to the other. Health promotion and disease prevention. So we always want to try to prevent these tra traumatic or stressor related disorders from occurring. So one of the first things that we can try to do is prevent childhood trauma. So monitor for and recognize child physical and sexual abuse. Report suspected cases to the proper authorities promptly prevent severe trauma reactions from occurring, and recognize occupations that have a high incidence of PTSD. This would include firefighters, police officers, military, medical staff. To prevent PTSD from occurring during traumatic events, we need to know these people need breaks. So if you think about nurses on the COVID unit, they're going to need breaks, they're gonna to need to eat, they're going to need sleep, water, things that sometimes nurses don't get. We want to give emotional support for people involved and support each other, debrief after stressful in incidents at work, encourage expression of feelings and offer counseling resources. So there are risk factors for acute stress disorder, PTSD, and adjustment disorders. So we would want to assess the individuals to see if they have these risk factors and need further screening. So we wanna ask about exposure to a traumatic event or experience. 
motor vehicle crash, sexual assault, physical abuse. For adjustment disorder, the event or experience might be less severe. Loss of employment. I see this a lot in children who've moved a lot. Um, death of a parent. Have they ever been exposed to a traumatic experience during a natural disaster, a fire, a storm, 9-11? Um, exposure or repeated re-exposure to a traumatic event in an occupational setting. And again, think medical personnel, law enforcement, military, firefighters. Living through a traumatic experience, an airplane crash, a homicide. PTSD is a risk factor for other disorders, including dissociative disorders, anxiety, depression, and substance abuse. So for acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, we want to assess for the following risk factors, and these are some things that we might expect to find. So we'll ask the individual, what was the severity of the trauma? How long did it last? What was the amount of personal threat associated with the trauma? And was it in home, was it on vacation, was it at their school? Um, was the setting that the traumatic event occurred in a familiar surrounding? We wanna know how vulnerable they are. So what we're thinking about here is what is their resiliency factor? How do they cope? What is their personality? Do they have other pre-existing mental health disorders? Did they get help after the traumatic event? Did they have social support, family support, support at schools, societal attitudes about the situation? What did their family think about mental health treatment and what are the cultural influences? What might we find? We might find that there are memories, flashbacks, and dreams about this traumatic event. Those are called intrusive findings. These memories of the event would be involuntary and distressing to the client. They may have flashbacks, so dissociate, dissociative reactions where the client feels like the event's happening right then. So sometimes military vets can feel that they're reliving combat situations when they hear a loud noise. You'll see a startle reflex, you may have nightmares about the event, avoid things that remind them. So if an event happened at a football field, then they might avoid crowded events that involve sporting situations. They try to avoid in general thinking about the event at all. We also might see mood and cognitive alterations. What does this mean? So these individuals might experience anxiety, depression, anger, irritability, decreased interest in doing things, guilt, negative self-beliefs. Maybe they had a sister die in a car accident and they think it's their fault. It should have been me. So that's a cognitive distortion. Detachment from others. Maybe they're unable to form close friendships with friends and family members. Inability to experience positive emotions like love. And again, they might have dissociative manifestations. So that's where we'd see the amnesia, depersonalization, derealization. When we think about behavioral manifestations, we may see aggressive behavior, irritability, angry responses towards others. Again, hypervigilance with a heightened startle response. So when they hear a loud noise, maybe in a restaurant, they always have to sit with their back um, to a wall so they can see the door. Inability to focus and concentrate on work or other activities. They might have insomnia. Um, this can be caused from nightmares. And destructive behaviors like suicidal thoughts or thoughts of harming others. Individuals who have adjustment disorder may experience a lifelong difficulty with change. So when we're talking to these individuals, we want to assess for risk factors. And that would be a question that we would ask. They may have a learned pattern of difficulty. So what does that mean? That means when a stressor occurs, this triggers a stress response, which is out of proportion. So disproportionate response to the stressful event. And 
they have problems with socially participating or coping strategies during these events. So I like to think of a trigger as an unhealed wound, an unhealed wound. So when something touches that unhealed wound, they have this di disproportionate response to the event and then they don't have healthy coping strategies or social skills when this happens. So this can cause a lot of disconnection from family, job loss, and expected findings would be depression, anxiety, and changes in behavior. So maybe they're arguing with other people, driving erratically. So this is adjustment disorder. Dissociative disorders can occur from a traumatic life event, event, and often they occur from childhood abuse or trauma. So things we would expect to see would include depersonalization or derealization disorder. Again, that's feeling detached from your own body or feeling like things around you are not real. Dissociative amnesia, lack of memory that can range from forgetting the name or date um, of their own, like their own birthday, their own name, to forgetting everything. And dissociative identity, identity disorder. And that's when an individual has two or more personalities. So their personality is fractured and sort of compartmentalized. So when they experience a stressor, then they may go to a different part in their brain so that they are able to deal with things differently. In order to diagnose someone with one of these disorders, we may want to use some screening tools. So there's a PTSD screen, a PTSD checklist, dissociative disorder interview schedule, some Matiform dissociation questionnaire, and a dissociative experience scale. We'd want to screen for SI, anxiety, depression, or substance abuse. And we would want to do a mental status exam. We may need to rule out traumatic brain injury from physical trauma. So nursing action, assess for recent and remote memory gaps or contradictions. Check for family or occupational difficulties and ask about the occurrence of stressful events. These individuals may have mood shifts, anxiety, and we wanna make sure that we are doing a thorough job assessing the symptoms that they're experiencing. Medications can help with acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. So selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs, SNRIs or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, mirtazapine, which is a norepinephrine and serotonin specific antidepressant, amitriptyline, which is a TCA, and then prozosin. Prozosin is a centrally acting alpha agonist. It helps with nightmares and insomnia. One of my favorite things to do as a prescriber is to stop people's nightmares and help them get a good night's sleep. Um, Prozosin is something that can do that. Irregardless of vital signs, a lot of people can tolerate prozosin if you titrate it up slowly. Propranolol is a beta adrenergic blocker and it decreases elevated vital signs and manifestations of anxiety, panic, hypervigilance, and insomnia. For adjustment disorders and dissociative disorders, medications might not be prescribed unless they also find um, depression and anxiety symptoms that requires treatment. Now let's talk about therapy. So cognitive behavioral therapy can help the individuals diagnosed with the trauma or stressor related disorders change their distorted um, thinking regarding the event. Prolonged exposure therapy combines the use of relaxation techniques with exposure to a traumatic situation. Psychodynamic psychotherapy helps an individual process conscious and unconscious thoughts. 
EMDR is a therapy for children and adults, which uses rapid eye movements during desensitization techniques and a multi-phase process. And this should really be done by a therapist who's specialized in this type of therapy. Anytime we want to dig up somebody's historical trauma, we need to make sure that they have DBT therapy first is often helpful for people who dissociate. It's particularly helpful for individuals who have borderline personality disorders. But regardless of what we use, we need to make sure that they have appropriate coping techniques before doing things like EMDR, because these types of therapies can be stressful when they're um, reliving some of these traumatic events. Group of family therapy, crisis intervention. So immediately following a traumatic incident, we want to intervene and see if we can stop some of these um, lasting effects. Somatic therapy, hypnotherapy, and bio-or-neurofeedback are also other types of therapy we can use. And the biofeedback or neurofeedback, the individual learns how to increase awareness and gain control of their reactions to a trigger. So regardless of what type of therapy we use, we want to make sure the clients are referred to social workers or case managers so they can get some community help. And we want to coordinate that care for them. We want to educate the individual on relaxation techniques, anxiety reducing strategies to avoid caffeine if it makes them more anxious and alcohol um, and obviously other illegal drugs. We want to help them perform grounding techniques when they dissociate. And if they can keep a written journal that identifies their emotions that are associated with experiences. So this has been an introduction to trauma and stressor related disorders. Here are the references. And again, these lectures are taken from your ATI book for this course.